Let's get it going higher. Oh my god! Fire! We will totally burn the building down if we do it this way. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Good morning everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It's gonna be one crazy, crazy week. We have so much stuff going on. If you remember from last week, we left you with our fire bowl display. So of course we're redoing our fountain feature in the front. So one of the key things we have to do with a retail store is constantly refresh. Change old displays, make new displays, keep people inspired because as people come into the retail store, they don't wanna see the same thing over and over and over again. So one of the features that we've been meaning to redo is this one right here. I was just telling Jack the shocking how many people dislike this feature and I never would use the word dislike I just think it was a little tired and we've got some new techniques we got some new products and so hold on tight as we show you a huge transformation in this section right here I want to add all of this fire stuff to it but to still make it aesthetically pleasing and still make it usable for our retail store staff to show our customers how to use these fire features we also have George from Coral G coming in this week what's up bud hey. what are you doing waiting for you <laughs> Hey, How are you? Good to see you. You too. What do you got? Actually, a right? little bit of a surprise. But he gave me a call, said, Brian, I got some fish. So he's bringing them in. We'll figure that out. So a action-packed week. You guys stay tuned. Can't wait to show you this fire feature that's sitting over here. It's so cool. Tuesday morning, I just got here. Behind you guys is the start of another awesome feature here, and I'm so proud of the way it's turning out. Had a vision on what this should look like. They're totally killing it. It looks so good. We've got the three spheres. We've got our large, which sits almost four feet high. We've got our small sphere behind me, and then we've got our new fire sphere. Say that three times fast. Fire sphere, uh, I, I got one. <laughs> so the idea is to really show off some of these different fire elements. We don't just have the fire sphere. We also have the fire bowl over here, which is really really cool. So we're gonna get water coming out of that, water pouring down these, water pouring down these, and then we're gonna try to get a couple waterfalls in between these guys. We're gonna do a technique that I learned years ago just using slate, which was actually the inspiration for building these things. I built the original slate turn in the back aqua garden for years and years ago. So I think bringing in that natural slate waterfall up in between this is gonna look really cool. This thing should be wrapped up in about two days. I'm just so excited in the way it's turning out right now. So with this fire element being inside, I'm a little nervous and maybe a little is the wrong word maybe I'm a lot nervous because I've also want to bring in all these plants around this because you guys know especially you that watch the channel on a regular basis I love bringing in a lot of plants around stuff so fire indoors plants around it not knowing exactly how this is gonna work should be interesting so stay tuned find out what happens with fire inside Aqualand hey guys so we're out here in the retail store working on our stack slate sphere feature right now what I'm doing is getting all the plumbing ran so unfortunately with this feature we can't run anything on top of the aqua blocks. We have to run through the aqua blocks, which is not that big a deal. It's just kind of hard and just time consuming because now we have to go through and cut through all these aqua blocks and we have to make sure all our plumbing's ran correctly and in the right spot so that we don't have to do double work or anything. So right now, I've drilled all my holes through these aqua blocks, plumbing that large sphere. I'm gonna run my two inch line from my bolt right here. It's gonna come in here into our T, which is gonna feed that sphere and then it's gonna continue on out here and then it's gonna manifold again. We're gonna send two lines through these aqua blocks kind of give you guys a quick idea of what we're kind of doing. So stay tuned and see what we're going to be doing. So some of you have noticed Chris hasn't been around. Chris is actually out in Texas right now with Ed Ballou, the Pond Professor. They're out there because Adrian Grenier. Now, if you've not heard of who Adrian Grenier is, check out the series Entourage. Yeah! 
you'll recognize the guy's face. He is an A-list celebrity, and he's looking to do some pretty amazing things out at his personal property. Started watching some of our YouTube stuff, saw Ed Ballou, the pond professor, knew Ed knew the science to help him with his very specific project. So Chris went out there to actually help Ed with a bunch of the prep work that needs to be done. This is gonna be more of an Ed Ballou pond professor project, but it's part of a huge program we do throughout the entire year, these different regional events where contractors come from all over the country to actually help us build these large and very unique different projects. But Chris, hope you're having fun out there. Let me know what it's all about. What's up everybody, it's Chris from Team Aquascape. I'm out here with two very special people. We have of course Ed the Pond Professor and then we have Adrian with Earth Speed. How you doing? We are right outside Austin, Texas. And guys, what are we doing today? Well, brought Ed and you out here to help me clean my ponds here. We have a beautiful pond system, but we want to just get them cleaned up a bit. And we conferred a while back and we talked about creating a wetlands filtration system because here at Earth Speed, we like to live in harmony with the land, but we also want to design the maximum potential for that system. So we're going to actually bring water up here, filter it through a network of filter plants and filter fish, which ultimately ends up going back into the pond. But the great thing about this is we actually get to harvest the fish for food. So this is going to be a yield for our community here. That's fantastic. That is awesome. Well, what I love about it, a lot of our products are used for decorative fish, which are great. You know, it's nice to have decorative fish, but to actually create food source and kind of reimagining the whole concept of agriculture and how we could do things on our own and utilizing the natural resources, the springs right on the property. This is really, really going to be incredible. So we have a ton of work, obviously, still to do, but the infrastructure's here now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of supply chain issues and food insecurity, so we want to create as much localized opportunity to have food for our community, for our neighbors. Just like backyard chickens, but it's backyard fish. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, we are going to be out here for a few days, and like Ed said, there's a lot of work out here. One thing you guys need to know is you will not see the finished product here on the Team Aquascape channel, but be sure to tune back into Ed the Pond Professor's channel. He will have the entire project along with Adrian going through everything step by step. It's going to be an amazing, amazing video showcasing this amazing property and the amazing project, and of course, the amazing people that brought us out to do this. And check out Earth Speed, please. All right, see you guys later. I think we're done. Like done done? A uh, little bit, maybe a few more. Let's go see Jack's version of done versus my version of done. We got a few more. Oh, here we go. A few more we of this. We can turn it off. Okay, come on. This looks awesome. That was a good idea, doing those cobbles rather than slate. That looks really, really good. Did you foam under this? Yeah. I think so. All right, maybe we're good. I'd like to see, because the only thing left is this cap. Can you get the plants in? Like that plant in and that plant, clean up those wires. So the only thing left to do then on Monday is just cut this and this. I bet you guys are excited to see it turned on, huh? So we got a surprise visitor today. George from Coral G is here. He called not too long ago and said he's got a fish that he would like us to quarantine. So let's see what that's all about a little bit of a surprise multiple oh my god yeah so we got four in really here cool they look super healthy they do look pretty healthy they look super healthy and then we got oh my god these three uh so it went from one it was one like eight to ten inch fish now it's seven yeah and they're a little larger well i knew that you would probably bring more like i had a gut feeling so i set you up a larger tank okay so we're, we're fine amazing it's super cool they look great though yeah so what's kind of cool is i'm just learning about these guys i know what that's called but this is the only one that's probably got like uh, Japanese type yeah. name. The other ones are all domestic koi. So yeah, as I've learned, learned from like different koi breeders, like koi guys around the country. Yeah. yeah, you start to appreciate the little things in every koi. Yes, yeah, some of these are just domestic koi, but I can still appreciate like this yeah. one. Like yeah, he's, he's a awesome. really pretty like black and orange. But yeah, this guy is definitely the star. He's awesome. Well, this is good because you have not seen all the things that we've changed in the koi room. Do you want to see something cool? I would love to. All right, come on. So do you know what koi kichi means? No. Koi kichi is the Japanese phrase for koi crazy. I'm koi crazy. Well, then you're right? koi crazy. <laughs> yeah. So George, going to Japan, like, how was it? Oh, it was unreal. Like, it's a bucket list for me for my entire life, right? Yep. And now that I've gone, like, when can I go again? Oh, I know. Here, come over here. He's right here. I'll show you what we were set up. 500 gallon tub, it's been running for a month, so it's all ready to go. Yeah, right? this is perfect, this is perfect. We're gonna have to acclimate them a little bit. That water's cold, especially when you're driving over here. Yeah. Stuff's like at like 68. While we do that, I'll show you the other stuff. Cool. So 
George, it took a whole lot longer to acclimate the temperature on these guys. The temperature was actually off by about 10 degrees, oh, and we could feel it. So Jack was back here kind of getting the temperatures ready. He said everything's good. We're within two degrees. So now we'll start putting these guys back. Yeah, I know you know how to use this. So why don't you do the honor? Do you want me to do it? Super happy that we can hold on to George's fish, keep them nice and safe. He'll be back to pick these things up, but I'm even more happy that Chris Hansen's back and he can put his talents to use to put this fire feature to rest. Chris, what, buddy? I don't say this enough, but you're like a superhero. <laughs> what? what do you mean? Jack, you guys worked on this and we couldn't finish it until this guy got back. Yeah. Like, out of all the people in Aquascape, you're the only one that knew how to do this. We started doing it, and I say yeah. we loosely, no, like I didn't have much to do it, like Jack and some other people, it was, it was like a car accident. <laughs> I appreciate it, He's really just, pumping his confidence yeah. up You turned McDonald's into Gibson Steakhouse is what you've done. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Hey, Jack, what you did do really good, though, just so everybody knows, I'll the rest of it. I'll tell everybody what oh, you did you well. Tell. This looks amazing. I know Brian had a very clear vision of what products he wanted to see in here, and I know he had input. But, Jack, I told you when I got here this morning, it looks awesome. I'm so jealous that I didn't get to work on it. And how about his slate work? I mean, this is the first time he's really done slate work. It's is super it? tight, man. Right? Second time, but like that much, I've never done that much. So does this mean the second time you do capstones, you'll be it's like, yeah, oh, my God. Exactly. Uh, maybe a little do the third time <laughs> yeah because i was super curious on what you thought of the whole thing it was killing you to go to texas yes because you had a vision for this was it no. similar to your vision i think it actually had exceeded my, yeah. my vision <laughs> i love the the combination of the spillway bowls and the spheres but the fire and water we're gonna turn the fire on but we're so so scared <laughs> of like like the plant material how flammable is the moss that's sitting on the side like we got to make sure that that's like sprayed down a little bit i know these things aren't meant to go inside it's more like hey we can turn it on really quick and then turn it off just to show examples but they are super cool like i can't wait till this thing's all finished to get to show you guys the fire but stay tuned because it's coming I'm literally like proud of you. Like I'm so proud of you. I had kind of a set vision on what this was gonna look like. We talked about that third sphere being in the back. We were able to pivot and do that bowl back there. It looks so, so incredible. Are you as proud of it as I am? Yeah, it turned out absolutely incredible. I'm really glad you gave us the opportunity. I didn't even think about doing the stack slate. And then you said do the stack slate, I'm like, oh, I'm taking advantage. Well, I still got tricks, yes, right? Like, yes. so the, you needed yeah, me a little, exactly. yeah, right? A little. What's your favorite part? I'd say the spill bowl. I love the spill bowl. Favorite part is this, how that water disappears Appears down into like a cavern down there and that's just like a little six inch drain tile piece with some moss put around it to hide the plastic but what I like about it is it allows us to recess that light like so deep so you don't see the source of light like comes from this like mysterious place it looks really really cool you don't have the splash from it, it just disappears right there's the no splash I think what I'm really excited to do and slightly nervous though is the fire we haven't turned these things on yet because I thought it'd be just as important for our viewers to see it the same way we're gonna see it for the first time. Yeah. So we've not experienced what it's gonna look like and we've definitely not been able to experience what it looks like at night. We've stayed here late just for you guys so we can all experience what the underwater lights look like at night and what the fire looks like at night. So we're gonna turn these on, then we're gonna shut the lights off and show you. So are you guys ready? Well, this is how easy it is. I'm gonna take this, it's in the off position. I push in, I go to ignite, click. Then you want to hold it here. So you notice I'm still holding this and I've got it pushed in. I want to hold it for a good like 15, 20 seconds. It allows the gas to kind of purge through that line. Once it's all in there, it should be running. Good, good, good. Still staying lit. Now I can change the flow. You ready for this? God, I hope we don't burn this place down. Ah, fire! <laughs> Go turn the other one on. Oh yeah! I'm only on low. That's low? Yeah. Keep it low for now. So I go run over to the lights. So let's see what it looks like at night. It's so awesome. 
Yeah. Jack, I wonder if this plane feels bigger because of the glass versus the rocks. I feel like we should try it. Not tonight, we're not. <laughs> it's late, we stayed up late for you guys. Next time you're here, maybe we'll switch that out to the glass and we can give you an answer. Is that as high as the plane goes? No, it can go higher. Let's get it going higher. Oh my God. We will totally burn the building down if we do it this way. Like, look at the difference between that and that. Jack, yes, 100%. We have to see if the flame looks bigger because of the glass versus the rock. I like the way the rocks look aesthetically better than the glass, but if you can get a flame that big, this is what we do. R&D. R&D. We have to let you guys know I'm absolutely loving the fire. Greg, what do you think, man? I think it's incredible. That heat is intense. But that is a fire. Yeah. Jack, speaking of fire, do you know what next week's video is? No, but you're going to tell me. It's the California Fire Pond. A pond we've been working on for what seems like a year. Teamed up with my good buddy Jack. Jack sold an awesome project out in California. We call it the fire pond because the guy built the pond to put out forest fires that have encroached onto his property more than twice in the last five years he's been there. So it's an epic pond. We're almost done with the thing. Tune in next week where you can see the answer to glass versus rock and more importantly the giant build in California. You know what to do guys. Like, comment, subscribe, tell us what your favorite part is. Is it the spear? Is it the bowl? Is it the light? Is it the wavy marks? You guys let me know and we'll do it again soon. Bye.